So uh, here we are. Welcome to another episode of the Go With John Show. Today, we have Brian McGranahan, Pat Kearns, and Michael uh, Schnitzer with us. And we are going to talk today about uh, uh, the Stanley Martin Custom Homes process for starting construction, you know, once the permit is uh, released. And we're going to talk about uh, change orders. So, Pat, you want to... Uh, you know, give us, give us, let, let me, let me just give us a quick uh, run through of how you get kind of to, to, to that point. So when you come into the Stanley Martin program, the whole process starts with a contingent contract. And while you're in your contingency period, we help you understand what it's going to cost to build the home and what's involved in site work. You remove your contingency and then Pat, what happens uh, quickly to get to the point where you so get the probably, permit. I'll take this and then push yeah, it you over can to take Pat. This. Sure. I was just going <laughs> to talk about the buildup, but you yeah. can talk a lot about the steps that take place yeah. prior to, to And I'm going to just give high level steps. Yes. So, so we've got to prepare the building plan and the grading plan. Right. Sometimes we're delayed while customers consider changes and things of that nature, but building plan and grading plan. Uh, then we have to go through the selection process. Then we've got to send all their selection criteria and the plans to the trades, mm -hmm. basically just to coordinate uh, uh, takeoffs and things of that nature to be in a position to start construction. And so what we tell customers, and we give them a, a timeline, and we actually send them timeline updates regularly, is that we need all the information complete about 60 days before we start construction so that Pat and his team is in a position to actually build the home with as little errors as possible with the thought process that the more unknown and uncertainty there is before the start of construction, that trickles down into construction. So one element of uncertainty could be 10 errors in the construction phase. So um, I think that's probably a good a good start. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of stuff that we're doing in the background leading up to that point where it gets released to us, right? The, the back office and, and our staff at the, on the production team are reviewing the plans, making sure there's no you know, things that are gonna impact the selections that they've made, because if they choose bigger trim or a different type of cabinet layout, or things in, like that, it may impact the overall plan and how everything works. So we're reviewing the plan, going through those things, making edits, making markups, going back to the customer, letting them know if there's something that's impacted that they may want to change or adjust, just to make sure that we're presenting them and giving them the house that they've imagined. Um, you know, Then we'll sit down with them and do their pre-con meeting, which we talked a little bit about previously in, in, in different episodes, just going over and making sure everybody's on the same page. Right. So pre-con, that's short for pre-construction. Pre-construction yeah. meeting. So we're, we're introducing ourselves to them. We're explaining the timeline. We're talking about the process, trying to answer a lot of those questions that people are typically pretty anxious about because they've gone through a long, drawn-out process. Mm -hmm. Not always long and drawn out, but it, it, in, the, in the amount of time that it takes to do all the things that Michael talked about, getting through the approval process, getting the grading plan, making their final selections, all these things, it, it takes time. So there's a lot of buildup and excitement mm -hmm. for both them and us. Right. We're looking forward to starting a new project. And for us, a lot of times, it's as soon as that permit comes out, they're like, the customers, they want to get started. Mm -hmm. They want the process to start. They want to see something actually happen on the site. But there's a lot that leads up to us being able to do the stuff on the site, mm -hmm. which is what we're going to talk about today. Okay. And and so the permits get released to us. We have to make sure all the, the parts and pieces are in place. Um, like Mike talked about, that we've reviewed and signed off in the plan and everybody's on board with it. That mm -hmm. The back office and us have kind of had our meeting to go over the plan to make sure that the information that was passed to the back office, the little small details get conveyed to us so that we know what to expect and, and what the customer is expecting. Um, and then we have to set up with the county to do something similar to what we do with the, with the customer, which is the pre-con meeting with the county. Right. So uh, uh, Brian's really familiar with this. He's worked in a lot of our different jurisdictions, which is why he's here with us today mm -hmm. to kind of go over that and talk about some of the steps and, the, and the, the process that we have to go through just to be able to begin construction of the home. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe one thing, and then we'll let uh, Brian kind of, you know, give us some of the details is 
we anticipate different things like permits. So we will have the pre-construction meeting X number of weeks in advance, right? We don't want to get all the permits and then say to the customer, hey, let's have a pre-construction meeting. So sometimes in terms of people being anxious to get started, a lot of it is because we're teeing them up. Right. right. We're having this pre-construction meeting. Well, what do you mean you haven't started? Well, we're having it early, so we're in a position to succeed when we get the permits. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, and, turn and it the over to the pre-construction meeting is also driven off, drives our turnover meeting, which is where we're meeting with the back office and getting the download of the house and all the ins and outs. Of right. It. So a turnover meeting is when... It's just the in-house, yeah. In-house, right. So that's when the... the, the that's the, prior to the... Uh, pre the, the pre construction. Exactly. Meeting. And that's when really the, they're meeting, the team is meeting with you, the project manager, and they're explaining to you yes. what needs to be built before you're meeting with the customer. So you can get your, that's what a turnover meeting is. Right. Yeah. And we generally do that about the week before so that once we do the pre construction with the customer, it's fresh on our minds. Right. Kind of know everything about the house, the site cost, mm -hmm. and time frames moving, moving forward. Yeah. But to, to Pat's point with regard to we get the permit, I mean, it may take a day or two to get it picked up because mm -hmm. we got to pay the fees and blah, blah, blah. And then what happens, Brian? I mean, maybe just take the example of the house that we started um, out on, uh, on Route 50. Um, so or, 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 yeah, no, it's typically what ends up happening once we get grading approval, um, you know, the the – Depending on the jurisdiction, like some jurisdictions, we have to reach out to them. Other jurisdictions, they reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And we do a pre-construction with the site inspector. Mm -hmm. And what they're after is, is they're going to go over the erosion measures for the job. Mm -hmm. They usually will allow you to go in clear enough to put the silt fence in and put the construction driveway in. And then they want to return back out, make sure that that stuff's in so that we're not contaminating any of the waterways, roads. Right. And then once they approve that, that's what drives releasing the building permit, at least in Loudoun County. Hmm. And Fairfax and some of the other jurisdictions, you just have to have, you usually have your building permit, and then yeah. you just have to have the pre-construction and the site inspector sign off before we're allowed to do the first step of yes. clearing. So, I mean, if it's a cleared lot, it'd just be excavation, but most right. time you have, you have something you have to clear, and you're not allowed to do any site work until that pre-construction meeting has been and so really it's two phases. You have to have a pre-construction meeting just to review the plans with the inspector mm -hmm. in case they want to make any changes to the plans because they have the right to use right. SERP, what's on the plan, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you have to get the work done. Then you have to wait for the inspector to come back out to certify the work is done the way the plans call for, plus whatever changes he mm -hmm. may want to make. And then you can begin starting, right. I'll call it land and, development. And, and they demolition. may approve it, and it may be another four days, though, before... You actually get the release of the right the um yeah so, building permit yeah. 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 yeah so the big thing to keep in mind is there, there's a couple things going on here right one is we're meeting with the county site inspector to review the approved erosion and sediment control plans they may adapt those or make changes to them when we're out there because they see something in the field that they want us to 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 protect even more than what's already there um you know, you also have, in a lot of cases, we're going into areas where we're trying to save or pre preserve trees. So you'll have an arborist that's involved with it as well, that walks the site with you, that looks at what tree protection measures we're putting in, what trees we've agreed to take down, um, how we're going to take them down. Are we going into a protected area? Do we have to take extra measures to protect the, the trees that we're trying to save? You know, root pruning, uh, all those things are in. in included in that inspection that we have to once we get the permit released to us or in some cases we have to go in and do these measures to get the permit released mm -hmm. um you know we have to go through and review that and go over with it then we have to on top of that even though we've met we then have to get miss utility called out because we're going to be doing digging because we're going to be putting in silt fence we're mm -hmm. going to be you know, digging up and doing root pruning measures. We're not allowed to hit utility lines, so we have to wait for Miss Utility to come out and mark. You don't want to do that too early because if you call it in too soon, the markings go away, mm -hmm. and then you have to recall it back in. And then isn't the ticket invalid after, what is it, Brian? It's like X a week. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if you call mm -hmm. it in, if you try to anticipate too early, you right. just got to recall it. Yeah. 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 yeah, and actually we have contractors that, some of our excavating contractors, especially in the this region, they just have someone in their office call it on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and it'll be 
you'll have finished landscaping sawed down and miss utility will be out there and we'll be <laughs> calling the excavator saying hey call off the dogs yeah. yeah they're spray painting my brand new sod so yeah but that that's just to keep you know to cover cover their butts because right. they're obviously so very, how many weeks i don't know brian maybe how many weeks does it take from the time on average maybe use an example of like infill Right, like inside the beltway versus outside the beltway. Yeah, so if you're you're inside the beltway, it's probably a week to get the inspector to even show up to get out there. Mm -hmm. And then once you get them to show up, I generally it takes about a week to get your contractors in line. So they're they're usually scheduled at least a week out. Um, so if you get your erosion measures in, and then you know the construction entrance, you're probably looking at like a total of three weeks or something before you can. So three we'll weeks would be reasonable in a normal environment. If mm -hmm. it gets busier, the county slows down. Yes. Sometimes the trades need more lead time or they just have more work. And granted, we can use our weight to, to kind yeah. of move that around. So it could go from three to four or five, depending yeah. on, especially depending on the county. Yes. So cl clarify the timeline for me, Brian. So three weeks from when? So, so from... from so, the so, so in a jurisdiction where we have the where we, the building permit is released to us and we're going to schedule it to be able to start construction, they typically have they're allowed seven to ten working days to respond to our request. Right. So they can take the full seven to ten days, contact us, and schedule the appointment. That doesn't mean the appointment's happening within seven to ten days. Right. It means they're scheduling the appointment with us in seven to ten days. Yeah. Then yep. we have the meeting with them. Mm -hmm. maybe probably two to three days after that typically depending on how mm -hmm. busy they are so you're looking at at least two weeks at that point from the time we got the permit released to us gotcha so and that's what i was trying to just kind of tie together here yep. so mm -hmm. so and 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 really when you're talking about pre-construction meetings there's two different pre there's a pre-construction meeting with the customer mm -hmm. correct right and that usually happens in anticipation of the permit being released then the permit's released but that's a misnomer because it's not really released. <laughs> well, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Okay. So in some jurisdictions, they release only the land development. I'll just call it this, the okay. land development permit. And you have to get all these things done before they'll release the building permit. Other jurisdictions, they release everything. But regardless of how you look at it, there are multiple steps before we're in a position to start construction. To start construction. And it could be three weeks to four weeks yeah. And yeah. before we even demo. We, we have a jurisdiction we work in where you have to post a, you have to go pick up a sign once the permit's released, post it in the, in the yard for everybody to be able to see that it's been posted. And the county has up to five days to come out and acknowledge that the sign's been posted before they'll allow us to schedule the pre-con meeting. That's wow. in Montgomery County. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it these are some of the things you, some it's kind of all over the board because then you look at Prince William County. Prince William County releases everything. There is no pre-construction meeting. Right. And you just start. So they, I, I it's the Wild guess West. that their <laughs> theory is, is that if the building inspector comes out for the first inspection and you have no erosion controls in place, he's just going to automatically fail you, refee you until you get them put in place, which at that stage, you're already two months into the build. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and I mean, this is an interesting con uh, conversation for, for me because from a sales perspective, I'm not dialed in to all these nuances that are going on in all these different jurisdictions and neither is anybody on my team. And, you know, so we give very high level answers to the public. And then we always tell them, you know, when you get further into the process, we're going to get you more uh, detailed uh, answers. But it's really interesting how different it is from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. It's there's there's a lot of different little things that nuances that are out there, and and that's why we have the team that we have is because they're experienced with them. They know how to navigate through them. Mm -hmm. They they've worked in these different areas and are familiar with not just the process, but a lot of the people and inspectors that are working in those areas. Right. So a lot of times that helps us facilitate the process, and hopefully it isn't as drawn out. You know, our obviously our goal is we want to get the process started and start building the home right away too, because that that leads to successes for us as well. Right. So, you know, and, and, and I, the, I think the thing for us is we get it. 
we understand, hey, look, the, the customers, have been, our clients have been through a lot leading up to that point. There's a lot of anticipation and excitement on getting it started, and they're lathered up and, and want to see something happen. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and it, it it's just as frustrating for us too because we'd love to get in there and just knock everything down and start building a house, right? Um, but it's it's the nature of the world that we work in, and and we try to navigate them through this process and, and make them understand that hey, there are, there are some steps that are going to have to occur before we can actually put a shovel in the ground, right? And you can start to see the the progress of your new home. Mm-hmm. And that's that, that's kind of you know what we wanted to kind of discuss and go over here is 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 to help help guide you through that process. Right. But isn't there aren't there times, Brian, especially on the infill projects, not when we're building on ten acres, where there's a lot of coordination with the neighborhood, or at least the adjacent neighbors, <laughs> because of trees, because I don't know. Fence, if you, share joint fencing. You know, we're taking joint driveways. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. there's, yeah. Parking in the street. The cutting trees down on the property line, Yep. you know, because there's a lot of shared trees and we'll mm-hmm. get letters yeah. from the neighbors saying that it's okay, but obviously we want to notify them and make sure that they're not right. having a graduation when, Brian, party when, or something When you like say that. that, we've already mm-hmm. gotten permission if we're taking a yes. shared tree mm-hmm. down. So it's, mm-hmm. right, in fact, the county wouldn't <laughs> release a permit if it showed that we were taking a tree down right. that was on the property line. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But you still don't want the neighbor who already approved and signed the letter right. to come back go to work and come home that next day and they're like well where's the tree so we Mm want to coordinate with the neighbors to make Mm -hmm. sure that we have you know Mm -hmm. just a good relationship yeah so go ahead brian and we get with those infills a lot of concerns from the neighbors especially when you have a property that you know down slopes Mm -hmm. to somebody else's backyard where they have it fully landscaped patio Mm -hmm. and they're worried about the runoff because well, for good reason. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of times once we start, you know, we start on that, they're, they're coming over and they're talking because they, they want to share their concerns. And, sure. And, yeah. and, and sometimes does that us. lead to um, getting with our customer and taking potentially extraordinary yeah. measures that aren't even on the plan just to appease the Absolutely. neighbors in a good way, right? right? I right. mean, Doubling if we up do on good... silt fence or, yeah. or, you know, super silt fence instead of standard silt fence and then right. putting silt fence in front of that berms. Mm-hmm. I mean, high fence. level, when we go to build, it's also a marketing event, right? Sure. So if we're not doing, if we're not being good neighbors to the neighborhood, that doesn't help us with future sales. Sure, right? absolutely. So, yeah. and the and guys I think, know that. I think the other important thing to, to that we try to keep in mind too here is that the customer's moving into that home and has to live with those neighbors long term. Right. You know what I mean? For us, we're building there. We want to keep a good marketing name. We want to hopefully, you know, encourage other people in the neighborhood that are considering doing the same thing. Yeah. That we're the right builder to go with. But more importantly, once we're done and we turn the keys over to that customer, they have to cohabit that space with whoever was next door to them or behind them or adjacent to them or across the street from them Mm -hmm. while they're living in that house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're trying to keep in mind that, you know, even though we're the builders, that customer is the one that has to move into that home and live with those people. And, you know, they they, want to have a good neighborly relationship and not be the dredge of of the neighborhood because... We, Pat, Pat here's, a, here's a key, it's a good point, and here's a key metric. We have some neighborhoods, especially in the infill, because in the F, you know, when you're out in Prince William or Loudoun or in Poolsville, Maryland, I mean, depending on where you are, you, you can't even see your neighbors, right? I mean, you just don't even know that they're there. But uh, we have certain neighborhoods and certain streets where over the past 10 or 15 years, we're the only builder that has built a new house on that entire street. I know, it's for pretty cool. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten customers. So yeah. we must be doing something right for yeah. the entire neighborhood to want to continue to use us. Yeah. Right? If we do bad work, right, it's absolutely it's not good. Yeah. So absolutely. And I and I yeah, you guys do a really great job with with managing the neighbors during the build. And I I know that for a fact because I rarely, rarely ever get a phone call uh, from anyone and you know the sales number is on the sign in front of the house so if anybody's upset about anything we get the call <laughs> yeah. well our, our, our pms so we send out letters to the neighbors our yep. pms will give neighbors their business cards yep. right so if something is up you know let us know let us know we we, we may be on site 
but we may be managing, you know, two or three other projects. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just get on the horn with us. I mean, there's, there's been occasions where we've gone to the store and purchased no park, even though you can park on the street, right? We purchased no parking signs to make sure that there are no construction vehicles, Mm -hmm. right? Parking. No U-turn in driveways. Yeah. You know, certain, certain like pipe stem type driveways mm-hmm. where people will pull in and then they'll U-turn in somebody's mm-hmm. driveway and that, you know, we'll, we'll stick up signage for that as well. So all of these things can add time. So, and, and it's great to be here today, you know, to kind of talk about this from a sales perspective and from a, from a building perspective, because we have to give very high level answers as a sales team. And every single build has its own set of unique challenges that have to be addressed. And there's no really one black or white answer, I think, from the time you get the permit to when do we start building uh, for every customer, right? Because it's going to vary jurisdiction by jurisdiction. It's going to vary neighborhood by neighborhood. And it's going to vary depending on neighbors, right? So when we reach out to the neighbors and they need some extra attention, it's going to add a little more time. So so before we take a break, is there anything, you, you, Pat, that you want to add uh, to this conversation about the timeline? I think when we come back from the break, we'll kind of recap the timeline and just kind of walk everybody through the steps and then we'll talk about change orders. I think the only other thing that I think we we probably talk about is once we get all those measures installed, we then have to reschedule an appointment for the inspectors to come back out and verify that everything was done accordingly. Right. And then the fun process happens, right? That's when we get to start getting to work after that's been approved. And I think, you know, the one thing that I found that's really interesting in, in this line of work is that there's a lot of different things that we do at that beginning stage um, because there's so much excitement that's been built up and I think that's one of the more interesting things that I've seen is you know some people throw block parties mm-hmm. um, when the house is being demoed um, just to have a celebration and invite all the neighbors there mm-hmm. there are different people that have different rituals that they do to just demark the process Mm -hmm. um, that I found fun and interesting, you know, some of them being religious, some of them being just family things that they do um, that really, you know, that we work with them to, to, to make sure that we're allowing them the opportunity to experience that. And I think, you know, I, I know Brian has, has dealt with some of this as well. It, it, it adds a little bit to the, to the whole process and the character of the process as well. You know, just having that experience with the buyer mm-hmm. and, and letting them have some of those things where it's like, hey, come on out and we're going to have a, a barbecue um, when the house is being demoed for the whole neighborhood. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. so, but I think the, the, the first law of demolition is always coordinate with your, uh, your customer the date of the demo because – if you don't, they could be highly disappointed. <laughs> yes. It's a big yes. thing for them. Yes. yes. That's Great. A, that's a popular thing to watch is is the house coming down. Yeah. So anything you want to add, Brian, before we close out this uh, segment? Yeah, I don't think Good. so. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll just recap the timeline that we go through from kind of the, 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 the ramp up phase that Michael talked about to the permit to when we actually do demolition. And then we're gonna talk about change orders. So we'll be right back. Sounds great. A lot of folks think that building a custom home is a complicated and arduous process. It doesn't have to be. At Stanley Martin Custom Homes, we have the process down to a science. We will bring you through the buying, design, and building phase one step at a time. Head on over to webuildonyourlot.com and check us out. Reach out to us if you want to get started on the path to your very own Stanley Martin custom home. We're back with Brian McGranahan, Pat Kearns, and Michael Schnitzer. And uh, so so let's recap uh, the, the conversation we had from the first segment. So, so, Pat, you wanted to have something you wanted to add before we kind of recap the yeah, timeline? Yeah, I just um, kind of tapping off what we, we were talking about earlier with, you know, when we're doing a lot of these infill projects, you know, it varies. Uh, sometimes the homes that we're taking down and deconstructing have been in their family for generations right um so there's a lot of attachment there and and that's when you see some of these things happen where people are wanting to go in and, and they'll want a brick from the old house or right. they'll want you know they there's a piece of trim where they mark the heights of the kids as they grew up that mm-hmm. they want us to pull off and incorporate into the new home mm-hmm. um you know things along those lines that that we really have to you know that's 
you know, that's why we meet with people up front and, and have these conversations and try to to peel back the onion and find out the layers and, and find out, hey, is this just a property they purchased for the purpose of deconstructing it and building a new one? Or is this something that's been in their home for generations that we need to take some care with and actually kind of handle with kid gloves and have some conversations with them and make sure that we're meeting their expectations there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that's one of the things that's, that's different than when you're dealing with just a production home or a production build where it's a bare piece of ground that you're putting 20 or 30 homes in. Right. This is sometimes something that's that has some history and has some emotion to it. Yeah. yeah. And then Brian, so you wanted no. to say something. Just yeah, one other thing I, that seems to be kind of a reoccurring uh, um, item that comes up at the pre-construction, you know, like Pat said, um, the customer's anxious to get going, they're excited, and, um, you know, part of the steps to get us to that start is making sure that the, on the office side that we're ready to build with, with, with regards to um, the site cost being signed off, uh, the building plan, the site plan, and all these things um, we're anticipating dates that that we think they're going to be ready and we'll schedule our pre-construction knowing that we're going to have that stuff done in time but then there will be things that hang it up and it ends up taking a little bit longer and and it, and it the, I, think I think the biggest yeah, thing like is that, that we want to be aligned with the customer right. and make sure that everything is been approved and signed off for them before we get too far into the process right so if they you know one of the steps that we take is we we do a final review of the grading plan with them Mm -hmm. we go over it to make sure that everybody's aligned and we ask them to sign off on it well this is way this is much prior to having a pre-con yep but i think pat pat's right pre-con yeah the pre-con with the customer and sometimes you know customers think their their thinking process and approval process is different right Mm -hmm. they dwell on things whatever and sometimes it can slow us down not that we're slowing down the county pre-con and getting everything teed up right but we could get to a point where oh this thing is not done. The grading plan is not signed off or, or the site costs aren't signed off. We aren't moving forward. They don't want us to move forward, right? We've right. got to be 100% aligned. Right, yeah. right. Absolutely. Good. The, I would say the only last thing is, um, I don't want to get too, too in the weeds with this, that a lot of customers with demolition will do deconstruction. Correct. That, I don't know the, if we want to. Yeah, so there are services out there that you can, in, basically that will take materials from the existing home and reuse them Mm -hmm. um you know some of them are reused for uh with veteran services right tied to the veteran services so they'll they'll use those those things for you know um you know uh, brian can probably talk to this more but a lot of times it's for training too Mm -hmm. they'll take the the stone or the brick um and and use it to for for people to learn how to become a mason Mm -hmm. um you know they'll take the trim work or the windows and and things like that and they'll remove them um i think there's different levels of deconstruction i mean i've had it all the way to where they're taking the floor joists and any two by fours they can salvage out um you know i don't know where they end up after that well they go to a so depending on who the decon company is there's a place in savage maryland where they take the materials and they resell it. And customers, we talk to customers, we give them, uh, this is when customers are, A, we talk to them when we first give them a site cost estimate about this. Then we talk to them when they remove their contingency about the construction. Then we tell them to speak to their financial person or their accountant to make sure this is legit. And we give them some names that they may want to call. But at the end of the day, we stay a little bit of an arm's length away. We give them all the information, but sometimes if there are tax, positive tax consequences, meaning in a good way, we don't want the customer to think, well, we told them that they may get back X in uh, in tax deductions, and they don't. So we give them the information, yeah. but there is there is a reclamation process where they where where there's facilities that resell the the products and i think the point of all this really is we started the conversation in you know trying to the purpose of this conversation really is to help manage the expectations of our buyers with regard to the timeline right so 
So just kind of, you know, these things all impact the timeline. So if you're going to do deconstruction, you know, the, the, from the time you have your pre-construction meeting with the team, the customer pre-con meeting, till the time you actually start building the house, it's going to be a little bit longer because you have to allow time for the deconstruction company to come in and deconstruct the house. And then we continue with our, yeah. with our process. So, so Michael, high level, can you give us just a flyover then of the timeline from yeah. contingent so, contract? Right. So once a customer signs a contract, they're in contingency. Typically, 30 days could be a little longer, uh, but our boilerplate is 30 days, and we can extend that. Then I would say from removal of contingency, depending on customer, depending on jurisdiction, right, because we don't push the customers to sign a plan by date X. Right. We tell them this is the date that they should. Right. Um, I would say anywhere from four to six months could be longer. Um, and then for startup, that, that startup phase, Brian or, or Pat? I mean, I would say on average, it's somewhere in that three to five week period right. is what you're looking at. Yeah. So four to six months to get the permit, if we're talking high level, yeah. three to five weeks to start construction after the permit has been issued because of all the things we just talked about. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, good, good. All right, fantastic. That was really uh, informative for me. I learn something new every time we have one of these conversations. So thank you for that. So let's talk about uh, change orders. So Michael, I'm going to go back to you. So there are no change order fees up until what point in the transaction? Because people change all kinds of things when they're starting up and picking finishes and all this and that. At what point do change order fees kick in? Right. So let's try to separate because we have two programs. One's a program <clears throat> for customers that can make any changes to the plan, customize the plan to their heart's content, right. and go outside of our standard finishes at our design studio. Right. And, and just to clarify or, or to add to that, we have on our price matrix, when you start the process with us, there's an option that you can select right on the price matrix that allows you to customize your home right and and enter into this and there's an option that allows that where we actually uh, credit the customer right for not customizing their home exactly so we just we have to separate the two categories but for those customers that are customizing they can make as many changes to the plans and pick as many finishes that are outside of our design studio as they want. Mm -hmm. Sky is completely the limit and there's no cost for them to dream. They want to see light fixture X price, faucet Y, they want beams and this, and we get them all the pricing. Mm -hmm. There's, this is during the startup process, right. no cost. Once we start construction, we needed, so I'm going back to when we first started, yep. we needed a way to get the customers to stop dreaming and stop slowing down the process. So right. what we said is, we're happy to, to entertain any change request after we've started construction, mm -hmm. right? But we want you to think first. And so what we say is, you pay us a minor uh, change order fee. Mm -hmm. That fee gets applied to the price of the change order mm -hmm. if they purchase what they've asked for. So let's say the customer purchased something via a change order after start of construction that was $1,000. Right. Right? The change order fee would get applied to the $1,000 so basically the fee goes to zero. Right. So, so we don't really charge them. Yeah, so yeah. there's really no cost for a, for a change after the start of construction as long as the customer buys the change. Buys the change. Yeah. If they don't, it's a great mechanism to say, okay, are you sure you want to spend money to keep dreaming? Right. So that's that's kind of our yeah. So what process. was happening before we had this system was people, people were dreaming and asking I had for one pricing. person yep. in the back office that was chasing customers dreams yeah. after we started construction and very where few 98 percent of, yeah. of the time they were not buying them right, right. we had to come up with a mechanism yeah, and, I, and i think the biggest thing to point out here is is that a lot of those dreams and things are worked out during that process so it's very during the start process. during the start yeah. process yeah the yeah. start so up process the right. start up process yeah. where they're you know we're we're 
you know, the things that we're pricing out and the things that the selection process and the, the minor changes to the plan and, and you know, the one thing that, that I've noted since working with Stanley Martin Custom Homes is the, 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 the ability to adapt and change and, and mold the, the elevations and, and make modifications to, to really adhere to the style of home that the customer wants to build. Is it a more modern style? Is it more contemporary? Um, you know, do they want a farm style? You know, all those things that, that we're able to work out and do prior to actually us getting the plan so that the things that we experience and we deal with customers on the change side once we build the home are typically minor in nature. Mm -hmm. Like there are little things that maybe the customer didn't think of until they've walked in the home and are like, you know what? we're building this deck on the back and we're going to cover it. We didn't think about putting a ceiling fan in, in, in this area. So mm -hmm. they would have thought about it because we would have, but yeah, I mean, it's a good example. It, yeah. it, it's just, <laughs> it's just an example. I'm throwing we would have out gone there. over that with them during you know the startup I mean? like, process. Yeah. And, and a lot of times when we're going through this, like we have customers that are like talking to us about, they, they put too many, too many things in front of me as far as options to select because there's just so many things that are out there now right that it's like i don't know why they bothered me with this i never would have even considered doing this but right. we've put it in front of you anyways right um as far as to try to cover as many things as we possibly can before we finalize that plan and get into the construction process because yeah. look we we've had the questions about you know um putting heated floors in the bathroom or putting heated floors in the shower or, mm -hmm. you know, um, things that, that most, a lot of people don't really think or consider, but mm -hmm. you know, somebody went to a hotel that had a heated towel bar, right. um, that they thought was really impressive that they want to incorporate into their home. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll look into that for you. Yeah. 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 And we've certainly done that and pretty much, I don't want to say anything, but mostly anything that a customer brings to us we've already done mm -hmm. um, and you know we give a customer a list of what we call standard options standard features so there's a there's there's many faucets to pick from uh, lots of flooring and cabinets mm -hmm. and tops and mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. but it's finite mm -hmm. right if a customer wants to go the I don't want to use the word infinite but the exponential route, right. then they go outside the four corners of the design studio or the four corners of the page that lists all the options mm -hmm. and the features, and they can dream what, whatever they want. I think mm -hmm. the, uh, the big thing, and, and maybe Brian can talk to this, is everything is being handled prior to start right. through the office, mm -hmm. right? But once Pat and his team once we do the kickoff meeting, the that's the turnover meeting, the right? turnover meeting, yep. the, the pre the pre construction meeting with the customer, right? Correct. Then, for all intents and purposes, everything goes to the PM, and the so now, yeah. now Brian is driving the change order bus, right? In terms of requests, I don't know, Brian, if you want to, yeah, so how does it work? So you know, when we do the pre construction, we tell them as soon as we we start the house. Usually by that point, we are done with contracting, so anything moving forward is is going to be the change order process which is like michael said we're going to collect a change order fee mm -hmm. then we actually have a form we would fill out the form mm -hmm. if a homeowner is requesting to change their front door let's say mm -hmm. so we would take the form it has you know the date that you're submitting it it has a description of what the change is going to be the stage that the house is in because a lot of times that's going to affect the pricing or it could slow the the process down because if we're stopping to wait for a door to be installed and we can't close up the house mm -hmm. it may delay the the house for you know two weeks or whatever the time right. frame be and then we also have a column that we if there's any kind of rip gut or tear Mm -hmm. You know, because if we've already installed a door and they hated it and they wanted to rip it out, then we would put that in there. We send that form into the office and then it usually takes them about, depending on what the item is. I mean, like Michael said, some of the stuff it's like we, we, we've priced out. So all they do is they look and they're like, OK, we already have a price for that. But if they have to go back to trades, it could take three to five days. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Three so, to five days. But I, I think usually. the most important thing is Brian 
for instance, knows exactly where the stage of, of completion and what things have been ordered. So mm -hmm. if a customer, using that door analogy, if the customer says, hey, I want to change the door, and Brian knows, oh, geez, I ordered doors months ago, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, I know that the doors are for just-in-time delivery already at the at the, the warehouse. Right. Well, you either got to pay for the door twice. Yep. Or you got to pay a restock fee. Only Brian knows that answer. Right. Mm -hmm. So Brian is. So that's why we need the PMs because they opine mm -hmm. and tell a the customer and b the back office delays, added costs, rip and tear. Mm -hmm. um, added because once in time. Yeah. Yeah. Because time, yeah. you know. So so. And, the, and there's yeah. a lot of times that the customers are just they they really don't know what is involved. If you end up with any kind of a situation where they want to do a structural change and we've already started the build, um, I mean, I actually had a customer fairly recently ask about putting dormers in a loft, mm -hmm. which is a truss, and you're talking an engineer, mm -hmm. the architect, then resubmitting to the county. Then you, once all those things are done, then you actually are gonna start the construction. It can get very, very costly. To them, they're, they're looking at the trusses saying, well, there's these like two foot, we'll just put a window in between yeah. the two of them, you know, and <laughs> run some floor out to it. Yeah. But, you know, and that, and, um, you know, typically we, we cover those kind of things at our weekly meetings and, the, yeah. and, you know, so they'd bring it up and then I would discuss with them. And most of the time when it's a situation like that, it's like, you know, we're, we're, I don't want to say we're talking them out of them, out of it, but once we educate them on yeah. how much is involved, that They'll say, "Okay, never mind. I don't want to do that." <laughs> well, yeah. and and I think part of it too is that it, sometimes you have to have those hard discussions with people and, and and talk to them about what ultimately what is more important to them. Um, in some cases, they may be considering or wanting to do something, but they're more focused on a timeline of getting into the home by a certain date. Right. And mm -hmm. you have to walk them through that process. Of, okay, hey, we by by all means we can consider doing this for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to give you a guideline. And I, I say guideline because we we don't know in some cases how long it's going to take the design to be changed, right? Or for the engineer to come up with it, or how long it's going to take the county to review and, and and provide the plans back for us to build. So we're going off of estimates of what our experience has been in the past. So we're trying to provide them a guideline or a snapshot of, hey, this is what we believe or estimate the amount of time it's going to take to process this change that you're considering. Mm -hmm. This is going to impact the back end of the project as right. far as when we're going to be able to deliver the home and for you to move into it. Is it that important for you to add this feature at that point in time? And sometimes it is because, hey, look, this is your one opportunity to do this. Right. Because you, you're not going to want to go and do this once you're living in the house. Right. But sometimes, even though it may not be beneficial for us monetarily, Right. Um, we may go to the customer and say, hey, look, if you really want to put this deck on the back of your house, yeah. you may want to consider doing this after the fact because it's going to stop us from being able to deliver the home when you want. Right. And you can live without a deck for a month mm -hmm. or two months mm -hmm. and have it installed once you're in the home. Right. But the dormer you would have to do. Yeah. So yeah. how long would it take? I mean, I know you don't know, right? But Well, well so we can give some. So, so I think there's, there's two things. So one is... The once Brian coordinates with the back office and gives the customer their price, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Based on the date that the office sent Brian the information, that change order is only valid for a certain number of days, right? It, right. it can't be valid in perpetuity because Brian keeps moving on with construction. Exactly. So there's a limited time frame where a customer can actually approve. Otherwise, if a customer says Two weeks after we've, I'm just picking this yeah. as in, two weeks after we've given them the price that they want to make the change, sorry, that price is no longer valid and we're not going to honor it mm -hmm. because now we've got to reprice everything out. Again. Where's the order? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then there's a lot that goes into the change order because, you know, using that door as an example, I may have to go back to the selection staff. Right. Yeah. They would have to pick the door. That there were coordinating with the, with the purchasing side too for lead times, mm -hmm. and and when you really look at it, it may be it goes across five different people's desks before we actually come up with an answer in right. in, in between the time frame and the cost of, yeah. of yeah. what it's going to be. The good news is people can dream, 
even after they start. Right. We, we have a throttle on it. Yep. And we don't discourage it. Mm-hmm. Um, everything runs through the, uh, the PM. And um, we're happy to entertain. And, you know, there's a finite time frame from when we give them a price mm-hmm. and, the, and the specifications to when they can either accept it or if they don't accept it, it's automatically right. rejected over time. Right. To, to answer your question, I would say if it's a major structural yeah, change. Yeah, adding a dormer. If somebody right. wants, so it depends when they added the dormer. <laughs> right. So if they yes. added the dormer when we're pouring the footers, right, is a lot different if they add the dormer and we're under roof. Right. So there's no black and white answer to any no. of these no, questions, which is really difficult. Well, this is great because well, it's hard it, to explain exactly. Yeah. And, and, but and, let me just say one thing though. So we can control how quickly our design, our, our architecture department and our engineer can turn things around yeah including getting the customer now to approve the plan again yeah but we can't control how long it takes the county, county yeah to re-review and to approve the change yeah yeah so, that sorry so that was, was just, just i, I, I said go ahead pat no and I, I think that's part of it too one of the things we always advise them of is hey look if you're considering doing something it's better to talk to us about it as soon as you're considering it. Yes. Rather than wait and try to make a decision as to whether you really want it. Because right. there, there's information we can provide you that can help you make that decision. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much direct you in a way away from the decision, but help guide you in it. And that's that's the important thing too that we talk to people a lot about is hey, look, we're gonna provide you with information. It may not be what you want to hear. It's not because we're trying to discourage you from doing this or moving forward with it. Yeah. We're just trying to prevent present you with as much information as we possibly can to help you guide through the process. To manage yeah. expectations. To manage expectations yeah. so yeah. that you understand, hey, look, I know that you really want that dormer. Yeah. But this is this is all the cause and effect of what adding that. And it may be worth it, Tom. They say, well, yeah. I'm going to live in yeah. the house for the rest of my life. Yeah. I want the dormer. I'll accept a, a one month delay. Yeah. I'm just and, I, and I think that's that's I think that's what I would say, too. You know, and I think there are a lot of people out there that that when this when the sticks go up and the house gets framed up and all of a sudden they say, oh, my gosh, I really wish we'd put a dormer up there. And, and you're right, Michael, if they're going to live there, I, I say invest the month, invest the whatever. We're not saying it's a month. I don't yeah. know what yeah. the timeline is. But, you know, if, if that's the way you think and that's what you see and you're agonizing over it. You should just bite the bullet, I think, and put it in because you, you may regret it. You, you can't go back and put it in later. Yeah. You know? There's yeah. a lot of things that we can demonstrate two-dimensionally to people and on paper. Yeah, Walking out and actually physically experiencing it sometimes is a different effect. Right. And the one thing that I try to advise people of, too, is, hey, look, you're the person that has to live in this long term. Mm-hmm. You have to be here. You have to walk up to this house. You have to walk into it mm-hmm. every day for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. If this is going to be something that every time you pull into your driveway, you cringe Mm -hmm. because you didn't do it, then invest the time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If it's something that is just, Hey, I really, uh, you know, kind of one of those wishy-washy things that you're really not sure about, then you may want to consider not moving forward with it. Right. I I would make a comment. I'll let Brian kind of talk to this. There's, um, uh, for the science people, there's the first law of thermodynamics. For construction people, there's the first law of construction, meaning the more often you delay construction, the harder it is to build momentum. And Brian, I don't know if you wanna Absolutely. talk to that because speed it, is everything. Yes, <laughs> it, it, and there is a cadence to the build. Mm-hmm. And when you interrupt that, it, it's, it. And as long as I've been doing this, I don't understand why it happens, but you interrupt it, you slow it down, and then it seems like it's like getting it, you're trying to get it's that inertia train rolling that is hard rolling to- again, and it just, it takes off super slow, and it's building up, and it and it takes, I mean, it can take week, two weeks to get the house back on to that, that Or sometimes, that depending was, on what yeah. it is, longer. Yeah. But that inertia is huge, and when you rock the inertia boat, Mm-hmm. It can, um, not in a terrible way, it happens, it doesn't matter if it was Stanley Martin, Martin Stanley, or somehow juggle up all the, the letters, mm-hmm. it can, it'll happen to any builder. It's right. just the fundamental law of construction. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Brian, did you want to add something else? I was going to talk about one, one of the houses that we put up, somebody, we got the house framed up, 
I don't even know if we had the, the, I don't think we had the porch poured yet, but they stepped out onto the porch and they were like, this is too small. Mm. And that was a, a, one of those examples where it was a pretty major structural change. Uh, Brent, let me just bring up, because I know who this customer is, mm -hmm. and we had gone over the depths multiple times. Right. Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hot spot for customers. How deep is your porch? Mm -hmm. What do you plan to do on your mm -hmm. porch? Are you going to have chairs? Mm -hmm. And what's the mm -hmm. vista? And blah, blah, blah. Well, we, 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 we start that conversation no, no, at, right. at the very, very yeah. first sales yeah. meeting that we ever have with a, with a buyer. So just yeah. keep that in the back of your mind. Absolutely. That's a legacy issue. And then, yeah. Brian, take yeah, it away. And it's <laughs> like Pat was saying, you know, on paper, they probably looked at it and they thought, okay, I can fit my two chairs. They had a beautiful view out of the front of their house. But as soon as they stepped all out on it, they were like, this is going to be too small. I'm not going to be able to set my chairs and do what mm -hmm. I want with it. And... Fortunately, it was the porch, so it's like we could still continue to move with the interior of the house. Mm -hmm. But that was not was a, I would say, three, three to four weeks. To no, get I think the, the oh. engineering. Oh no, no, I'm all talking about just back. their decisions. Think about yeah. when they. I, it, from the it time was they started, three to four months from the time they brought it up to you. Yeah, because and it then, was they and were then at the end, What ended up happening is is the rest of the interior was done but I didn't have this porch done on the front. So I <laughs> yeah. couldn't put siding on, I couldn't yep. finish the stone. Like yep. there was, there were so many things. Critical that, path, that, yep. Yep, that, that it, you know, it, it was a, you know, chain reaction of, right. at the very end, I mean, it was like, typically yeah, and there's, siding's there's a, going on right after drywall and I was putting it up like weeks before. And we there's, a, there's a lot of things that go into some of these, the, the, these changes that people really don't consider. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you're presenting it to them, they don't understand what is all involved in it and and as a result don't necessarily understand the cost to do those things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know what i mean that's that's the one thing that i think we benefit from is that we have people with such experience and knowledge that they can walk the customer through it and kind of explain to them hey look i understand you you may not understand where this is coming from but l let me walk you through all the things that we have to do in order to incorporate this change right you know what i mean like it's not just pouring a little bit of concrete to extend it we've got to put new footings in the ground we've mm -hmm. got to excavate that area we have to form new walls we have to then go back where we've already poured your porch and try to tie in new or deconstruct what's already been done mm -hmm. we've got to go to the the trust, the, the trust manufacturer we have to not just bring out new trusses but we have to design them to make sure that they have the right loads and the right the right calculations to make sure they they can withstand what the code requires them to withstand so we've got right. to go through all that design process and change to incorporate that into the plan so there's there's a ton of things then we have to actually get them built right you know um so there's a lot that goes into it and 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 the other thing too is you know there's a wonderful thing that we do now which is you know one of the other things we explain to people is we do what's we have an automated bill pay cycle so it's great for construction in, in our in our in our in our co contractors because our schedule that we have that our PMs used is tied directly to how we pay our contractors. So back in the day when I was a PM or a, a construction manager, I would schedule everything. In the 1920s. Yeah, in the yeah. 1920s. <laughs> okay. And then I would have to go spend two days in the office, right, reviewing and approving bills and signing right. off on everything. And mm -hmm. is it the right right amount and all this stuff? Well, now we preload all of our contracts before we even start the build process. Right. So all that stuff's loaded into our system, and then when our project managers sign off or check off that an item's been completed, it automatically pays our contractors. Right, right away electronically it goes through and they get paid for it we don't have to go in and review invoices we don't have to sign off things we mm -hmm. don't have to cut checks to them right you know it, manually it all gets done electronically nice. so they're getting paid quicker we're able to schedule things easier right it takes less time but the one detraction is is that when we make a change yep we have to reload that contract right. and it has to be uploaded back into the system yeah so sometimes the one thing that drags is okay, the customer comes to us, they want to add a ceiling fan. Great, it's already a pre-priced option. Let's yeah. add it in, yeah. let's get them to sign off on it. Okay, why isn't it installed yet? Mm -hmm. Well, we have to get it loaded so that the contractor knows that they're gonna get paid for it, they yeah. see it in the system, then they send the person out to do the work. Right. So there's a little bit of delay there because of the way our system's set up, but it's just one of those new 
nuances yeah. that but is the, kind of there. But at the highest level, that system is designed to for velocity. Yes. And so even if there is some slowdown in that overall, we are light years ahead of the industry in cloud-based technology and how we pay people mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think at the end of the day, even with that example, Brian, that, that you're talking about, uh, the customer's still happy. Right. It's just, it was a long drawn out process. Right. But in the end, they love their house and, you know. Yeah, and it's something they really felt was important. It's the way they wanted yep. to live in the home. Right. It was one of those things that we had to assess and talk to them about. And, you know, is this that important to you? Yes, it is. Okay, we're going to move forward with it. And yeah, it was and important to Brian. Yeah. Yes, it was. Well, I, and, and I will say, I've been in, I've been in this industry for a long, long, long time since the '80s. We can and, tell, John, just <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> but mm. it's very unusual to be working with a team of people who are so patient and understanding with with the buyer, uh, the customer, and. You know, everybody in our team from Michael, I think a lot of it comes from Michael. Michael takes an extraordinary amount of time with our buyers to explain what's going to happen and what's going on. And I think his DNA is throughout our entire organization. You know, it goes down to the PMs. I mean, I've, 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 I've heard from many, many, many customers that they really appreciate that we take the time to educate them. Uh, because we do this every day and they don't, right? Yeah, and thanks. that's what a big part of this conversation was today with the change order. We're going to take the time to explain. In your example, Brian, with the front porch, it took the buyer, the customer, a very, very, very long time to make their decision as to what they wanted in the porch, but we worked with them to get it done, you know? Correct. And I think, you know, it's not always what they want to hear, right? They, they don't always want to hear the things that are impediments for them mm -hmm. to have this done mm -hmm. to their home. Right. But for us, it's more important that we get that out up front rather than give them the bad news after they've made the decision to do it. Right. And, you know, I think that's one of the really important things is, is the communication process and making sure, even though you may not want to hear this right now, we want to make sure you understand the impact of this decision. Right. We're not trying to keep you or, or shy you away from doing it. It's just a matter of we want you to understand and and follow along with us and be part of this decision mm -hmm. so that we can give you as much information as we possibly have available to us yep. so that you can make the decision that's right for An you. An educated decision. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Fantastic. Anything, Anything else, else anybody wants to add about change orders? Brian? Yep. I think that's... Yeah, that's a great. Good Fantastic conversation. I do want to uh, close and say one quick thing. So, Brian, you mentioned our conversation about weekly meetings that we had uh, mm -hmm. earlier. You referenced that earlier in the uh, in this episode. So episode 30 is a conversation that Brian and Pat and Michael and I had some weeks ago. And it is off the rails. It's our it's our number one downloaded episode, and it's the last one we dropped. I think anybody that's listening here today, if you want to learn more about how things work during the construction process and the week to week uh, events that happen and what happens in the weekly meetings, go check out episode thirty and and uh, take a listen to what Brian and Pat and Michael had to say about the week weekly meetings. It's really a, it's a good episode and the feedback we're getting back from the public is phenomenal. So I know you'll enjoy listening to that. But uh, we're going to close out today. We've had uh, Brian McGranahan, Pat Kearns, Michael Schnitzer here for another conversation. Today we talked about the startup process and change orders. We hope you enjoyed listening. Uh, thank you for joining in. Thanks for having Thank us. you.